If you'd please rise for our gathering hymn. Good morning and welcome. Thank you. Near and far, it's a joy to have you with us today. I am very excited that we have Colleen Holmstrom's going to be giving the sermon this morning. Uh, as you know, I was out of town. Thank you for the time off. Katie and I were celebrating our 20th anniversary, and so I did not have time to write a sermon. And so Colleen was gracious enough to step up and uh, preach for us today. I'm excited. Um, we we have a lot of fun things going on. I've got good announcements about the rum and shell. You'll notice that there's not too much left in the fellowship hall. Does anybody need a dining room set? I'm just saying. We can't give that thing away. Um, but otherwise, we're doing very well. Um, and thank you to everyone who made that possible. All those people that donated, everyone that helped, all the youth, they did a great job jumping in. Um, Annalise and Jan, they, they worked their, took us off, I guess is a, a proper way to say. So thank you, thank you, everybody. It was definitely a group effort. We appreciate it. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's continue our service with our invocation. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We come now to our brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are in bondage, bondage to, sin to sin and, and cannot, cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our service continues now with our Kyrie. In peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world. For the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. 
for your people here who have come to give you praise for the strength to live your word let us pray to the Lord Lord have mercy Christ have mercy Lord have mercy help save and defend us O God Amen Now the feast and celebration all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom O oh God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Now for our first lesson. Thank you, Norman. Thank you, Pastor. We're reading today from the letter of 1 John, also known as the book of 1 John. Glory to you, O Lord. Thank you for your response. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we, ought also, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, because perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. 
Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. For those who do not love a brother or sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandment we have from him is this. Those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Could I have the children please come forward? Hey, you two. Thanks for being acolytes today. You're doing a good job. Oh, you're going to flank me. I like it. So, what does it mean when our lesson uh, says God is love? We got one more? Come on, guy. Come on. You're okay, buddy. What does it mean when we say God is love? You don't know? That's kind of unusual, right? You want to give me five? Good job. Yeah, you're good right there. Nice, nice. Thanks, man. All right, so God is love. Well, it's a little bit of a a confusing passage because it's talking about love abiding in us and us and God and God in us and and loving our brothers and sisters. And what does that mean? Any ideas? So how do we show the world that we love God? Any ideas? It's not a trick. I bet you know the answer. What do you think? Do we love everybody else? That's right, God created everything, and God created everything that we might love it, right? Just as, because God created them out of love for us. And so, kitties too, that's absolutely right. So God made everything and made us to love one another. And that's what it kind of means when we say God is love, right? God, love is what God wants uh, us to bind each other with. So, I love you, you love me, I love you, you love me, I love you, you love me. We all love each other, that's the idea. Do we always pull that off? Why not? Lots of reasons, right? We don't need to go in it. I know, we've talked about that. We can be selfish and spiteful and, and, you know, just inconsiderate sometimes. We can still love people even when we do those things, but it's when we forget all about love and sometimes call a brother or sister an enemy that we really forget what God wants for us, right? Especially when we, you know, we just say, I don't agree with you, you must be evil. God doesn't create evil things. People can do evil things, but God doesn't create evil things, right? And so we're called to love one another yes. through, difficult, through difficulty, through disagreement, through conflict even. We're called to love one another. And that love is God binding us together as God's people. So whenever we go out into the world, we're called to share love. And in so doing, we share God too. Does that make sense? So when you say, I love you, mom, right? That's you saying, uh, God bless you at the same time. When, you, when we say we love anybody, it's just like blessing someone because that's how God blesses us through the love we share together. So if I say bless you, what am I saying? I'm saying I love you. And if I say God bless you, I'm saying God loves you, right? And we're being bound together in that love. And that's the state God wants us to be in with everyone. We don't always pull that off, but that's what we strive to. And that's our, let's just say that's our standard of practice, is love for one another. Can we work on that? Nice. I like it. I like it. All right, let's pray. Gracious God, you bless us. You love us. You show us a vision of a world that is full of compassion, kindness, and above all, love for everyone. Help us to reach that ideal, to, to love our enemies, to love our friends, and especially to love our brothers and sisters in Christ. Help us to be those people that you call us to be. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Thanks very much. Head on back. If you'd all please rise now for the gospel acclamation. He said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap, 
They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Oh, how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? And do not keep striving for what you are to eat and what you are to drink. And do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that strive after all these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, strive for his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that you do not wear out and unfailing treasures in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. When Pastor asked me to do a sermon, I thought he was kidding. Uh, he wasn't. And so I went through my father's sermons to get an idea, and instead I found a sermon of his that I really liked, so I'm going to read to you one of my father's sermons. Why worry? God has promised to take care of everything that he has made, and he will take care of you. He'll take care of us too. People don't generally believe this, for if they did, they would lead happier lives, and that is exactly what God wants for his children. I'm sure there's nothing that God likes better than to have us happy in what we're doing. Out of his great storehouse of blessings, he stands ready to give us all that we need. Not only the blessings for our physical well-being, but also the courage and the strength to resist temptation. If we had lived years ago and wandered down a stony road in the Holy Land, we would have come upon a large group of people sitting on a grassy slope on a mount. If, out of curiosity, we had stopped to join the crowd to learn what they were doing, we would have noticed that they were listening to a man speak. He was an unusual man. There was a certain radiance about him. And we soon realized that he was a reason for the crowd of people. If we had stayed to listen, we would have been thrilled by the message of Jesus too. He realized that many of the people gathered there on that grassy slope were worried. And he tries to calm their fears. Listening closely, we would have heard him say something like this. God, who made all things, is my heavenly father. I have come from him and can tell you what God is like. God made the grass, the flowers, the birds, the mountains, the lakes, rivers, and streams. And not only did he make them, he cares for them. He cares for you too. For man was the crowning climax of God's creation. For he made him in his own image. And he breathed his breath into man's soul. And made man the most valuable part of his creation. Now look around you. Over there are some birds. They don't worry. They don't plant seed in the springtime and they don't reap a harvest. When they awake in the morning, the first thing they do is sing a song. They don't even know where they're getting their breakfast, but they're happy. God takes care of them. Or take a look at some of these beautiful flowers. They don't work. They don't spin. Yet have you ever seen anything as beautiful as a rose? What causes a seed lodged there in the earth to break forth? struggle from the ground into the air, and then burst into a beautiful flower. It's the power of God. Now, if God takes care of an insignificant sparrow, and if God takes care of a little flower that man tramples under his foot, don't you think God will take care of you? Oh, you of little faith? Then why worry? 
God has promised that he will take care of everything that he has made. Certainly, he will take care of you. Let's look for a moment at man's worries. They are very real. At some time or another, we all come up against problems that we can't possibly handle. A statistician figured out that 100 years ago, there was something like 72 needs of mankind, of which 16 were considered basic. Today, 100 years later, there are 484 needs of mankind, and 94 of them are considered basic. And so man today worries about providing these 94 basic things for his family. Then there are other worries too, our business. Competition is keener today than it's ever been. How can you operate at a profit? Our young people have problems, problems a lot more real than we give them credit for. Then we see others who become slaves to degrading habits. All of mankind cries out, set us free from our worries. If you will take me at my word, says God, and sincerely believe in me, I will give you the strength to meet any emergency in life. A man orders a bowl of soup, but when it is placed in front of him, he complains to the waitress, I can't eat this soup. Why, she asks, is there something wrong with it? No, nothing wrong with the soup, he explained. I just don't have a spoon. God has provided us with all of our needs. It's up to us to use our ingenuity to seek for the things that he has given us and to make use of them. Get a spoon and reach out for these blessings of God. Reach out for all of them, especially for the blessing of salvation. A displaced person had so little food for his family that he had to hide it and ration it out daily. His little seven-year-old daughter was so hungry that she crept to the basket early one morning and she took a piece of stale bread from it. And for that, her father punished her severely. Her only complaint, if I could feel full just once. I'm very much aware of the fact that when we speak of the abundance in America, we must frankly admit that these blessings are not equally distributed, nor did God intend that they should be. He meant that personal initiative should play a part. But sometimes, even when people try hard, circumstances are such that they find themselves in great need. And it is here where sympathy and sharing and Christians' generosity make the contribution. God's great plan includes the use of loving hands to pass along his gifts to the needy, among them also the displaced persons of the world. Oh, if I just knew Jesus personally could feel him, his hand touch my life, cried a new convert. Have you ever prayed for that? Asked the pastor. And when the answer was why, no, I never thought of that. It was suggested that right then and there, they kneel and ask for this gift from God. Shutting her eyes tightly, the new beginner prayed, please lay your hand on me, O God. And as she did, she cried, he did touch me. But after a moment's thought, she added, but you know, it felt strangely like the touch of your hand. It was mine, answered the pastor. Whose hand did you think it would be? When God wants a hand to do a loving deed, he uses the ready hand that is nearest. You become the hand of God as you lend a helping hand to others. It's a good practice for us Christians to bring our worries out in the open. Line them up where we can see them, where we can face them. They may seem numerous like an army, but once they are out in the open, we can fight them. The best remedy is to ask yourself a simple question. Is the worst Thing that happened, excuse me, if the worst did happen, how bad would it be? Is it any more than God and I can handle together? Remember, one man with God is a the majority. Then repeat the simple verse again and again to yourself. 
if God be for me, who can be against me? And the next time an overpowering temptation comes your way and you are ready to play the coward's part and give in, ask God to fight the temptation for you. The Bible tells us we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. With all my heart, I believe that God is and that he cares for me as an individual. I believe that God has a specific plan for my life and I want to live my life so that I accomplish God's plan. And I can do it only if I let God lead me and guide me. If only I can let God do the worrying for me. Then I know nothing can be too much for me. When we awaken in the morning, as Christians, we ought to say, God is for me. And when we sit down to breakfast, we ought to add these words to our blessing. It would make it more meaningful. God is at work for me when he provides the rain and the sun and the growth which brought the food to our table. In our daily lives and work, when problems arise that seem we seem incapable of handling, stop for a moment and say, God is with me. You'll be surprised at how many different ways God has to help you. We, we will soon find that God will help you keep your head clear so that you can avoid many of your difficulties. At the end of the day, we should let God have his due. Don't carry today's burdens into tomorrow. Slam the door and draw the curtains on them. Say, God, here is my record with all of its mistakes and heartaches, its successes and joys. And God will smile on you in love forgiving and blotting out our every sin. Only then will rest come naturally. A woman who regularly went to church and usually sat in the same pew often left little crumbled bits of paper on it. One day, being very curious, the janitor flattened out some of the pieces and read what was on them. He read things like, Janie's sick, John's without a job. Puzzled, he took them to the minister. And the next Sunday, the pastor asked the woman to stop for a moment in his study. I don't mean to be too inquisitive, he said kindly, but what do these little slips of paper mean? I read a sign in a streetcar, she explained, and it said, take your troubles to church with you and leave them there. And so I've been writing them down on little slips of paper and I've been leaving them. It's wonderful the way God has helped me. Why worry? Why worry? God has promised that he will take care of everything he has created and God is faithful to his word. God Almighty will take care of you. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. We should all say thank you for the lovely sermon. Appreciate it very much. Yeah. Maybe that'll inspire somebody else, right? Anybody else want to? Well, I, and maybe uh, Colleen's got other sermons she could lend you. I don't know about that. <laughs> that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Uh, if I could invite you now to please rise. Let's sing together our hymn of the day. This is my story. 
This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I am my Savior, I'm happy and blessed. Watching you. Together we pray. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers, and for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the newly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in you always. God of grace, hear our prayer. For the well-being of the earth and all created things. For rivers and lakes, streams and estuaries, melting glaciers and polluted waters. Renew the face of the earth and shower us with your goodness. God of grace, hear our prayer. For all the nations and all those in authority. For local, state and national leaders. For elected representatives at every level. And for international organizations. That justice and peace may reign. God of grace, hear our prayer. For all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness and unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all who are ill or suffering, God of grace, hear our prayer. For this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community, for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, and for all who seek to share your love with the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. For whom else do the people of God pray? For the people of Nebraska after the storms. God of grace, hear our prayer. With, th with thanksgiving for the saints who rest from their labors, help us like them to bear much fruit and to become your disciples. And at the last, bring us to that heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let's share that peace together.
We have some announcements. So my first announcement is that this coming Saturday, the Dirt Dabblers will be having their annual plant sale starting at 9 a.m. So uh, if you want, come and buy some plants. My understanding is they just go until they're out of plants, which usually doesn't take that long. Is that right? They're usually, you know, it seems like within uh, two or three hours, they're all done. So just keep that in mind. Don't uh, sleep in if you need plants. Uh, my second announcement is um, I want to, uh, after the service, we have class today, and uh, Armando Ramirez, who, Armando, do you just want to give us a wave right there? He's, he's from Forge Mentoring. Um, Forge Mentoring is similar to Impact Mentoring. You may remember that mentoring program that Peace supported. Um, they unfortunately had to close down this last year, but Forge is moving into town and trying to fill in the gaps of all those young people that need good mentors in their lives, good Christian mentors to help them. Uh, grow and uh, just become good Christian people. So he's going to have a presentation for us after the service. I'm excited to have that. So if you have the opportunity, stick around and uh, participate in that class. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, also, uh, the announcements that I may be with bated breath, the rummage sale that looked like it had taken over our fellowship hall and is now more or less gone, made $2,250. So it was fantastic. It was really good. Um, which, on top of that, that means that our fundraising efforts are done. The, we have enough. So, we, the, <laughs> thank you. The, the kids and the volunteers, especially Dusty, who is here all day, um, and, and much of her family, too, all day on Saturday, and Amy Umbarger, who I don't see this morning, but if you see them both, give them a big thank you. They worked hard to help make that happen. Um, we're all done. So, the kids won't be asking for money anymore, which is wonderful, right? But it means that we will have enough to have a wonderful trip, get some experiences in with the kids in New Orleans this summer, and really participate in this wonderful opportunity. Thank you all so much for your generosity. Really made this much smoother than I expected. I thought we'd be doing fundraisers until July, honestly. So, this is fantastic. Um, Let's see, I think that is actually all the announcements I have. Anything else from the congregation or something that I forgot? Okay, then let's continue with our service, and that means our offering. If I could have my acolytes.
Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. If you'd please rise now for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who by his death on the cross and glorious resurrection broke the bonds of sin and death and gave life to all creation. And so with the church on earth, all creation and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are filled with your glory. On the night of his betrayal, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Hearing Christ's call to love, to hold on to faith, we pray as he taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Here at Peace Lutheran Church, all people are welcome at the Lord's table. So I will invite you to come and share in this blessed meal as soon as it is prepared. We have in our trays today, we have red wine on the outside, white grape juice on the inside, the bread cubes, and the wafers. Please simply ask for whichever you prefer. Thank you. If I could have my helpers.
Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. If you'd please rise now for the blessing and dismissal. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. The God of resurrection power, the Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together our sending song, This Little Light of Mine. Hallelujah. Go in peace. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.